This is number one of I Declare It. I Declare It. This is the new series. I'm excited to start. And guys, gals, women, men, children of the Most High God, I am so excited to get into 21 days of fasting and prayer with you. With you and you and you and you. Why? Because there is a scripture in the Bible that talks about these things only come by what? Prayer and fasting. There are some things that you've been praying for. There are some things that you've been irritated about or grieved in your spirit about. But I'm telling you right now, you're that close. You're that close because you're not going to pray by yourself. You're not praying by yourself. We have got, um, and I don't think Clifford mentioned this, but we have on our app a place where you can go put your prayer request. Now, let me tell you why that's there. We're going to also take that and put it on our Facebook prayer page. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to have not just you pray anymore. you got a whole army that's going to be standing in agreement with you. We are going to be praying for the next 21 days for you and your family for their breakthrough. Amen? For whatever it is you are needing prayer for, you ain't asking by yourself no more. Amen? Because why? One could put how many to fly? Talk to me. A thousand. How many can two put to flight? Ten thousand. So if I even take like just a few people, I got a whole lot of devils I'm chasing, right? Amen. Y'all need to be glad about that because y'all ain't chasing them by yourself. No more. No more. No more. No more. Praise the Lord. Well, before we get started, let's just pray right now. Put your hand on your head. Father, I just pray and I speak healing right now, even through this screen. Those that are joining us via Facebook today, we speak healing over you. We speak deliverance over you. I speak faith and not fear because you are a child of God, so there is no reason to fear. God is still in control. I said, God is still in control. He didn't wake up this morning worried about COVID. He didn't wake up this morning worrying about how bills are going to get paid. He didn't wake up this morning saying, I don't know what I'm going to do about them crazy, crazy children driving me crazy. Come on. He woke up this morning because he's already got it all under control. Amen. Aren't you glad about that? Clear my mind. Come on, y'all say it. Clear my mind. Remove every distraction. And Father, let me receive every word. I said every word that you have for me today to take me into this new season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as you sit, turn around and smile real big at somebody that might be rude at other places, but I'm telling you, so they ain't going to wonder why you're staring at them crazy grinning, okay? Praise God. Praise God. So this is series, I Declare It. I Declare It. And this is series part one. And what I'm going to be talking to you about is this. This is a question we've all asked, right? Why are you here? Why are you here? So this series, number one, I'm starting it out with this one question that's always kind of a blockade to what God is trying to do in your life. And that is, I am here on purpose. I said, you are here on purpose. So one more time, I know you got your phones out. If y'all have them, go ahead and put them on mute. I want you to text out, tweet out, whatever y'all do. But this is the other thing I want you to do right now. Somebody's going to need to hear this word, so go share this feed. Go on your Facebook and hit share right now. Turn around to your neighbor and say, why are you here? Why are you here? Now, turn around and tell somebody else. Say, God knows because he sent you. Amen? And now turn to your other neighbor, the one you didn't pick first. I don't know why, but we ain't going to talk about that. And tell them, say, I am here on purpose. Now tell them again, saying, you, baby, are here on purpose. Woo! Right there. I could just stop and we could just shout a while. Amen? Amen. So here's the facts. If you don't know why you're here, guess what you're going to do? You have no reason. You have no reason. If you don't know why you're here, you have no reason. Think about that. Your why, your why you're here is your purpose. They're connected. They're intertwined. Your purpose will answer that question. 
of why you're here. Proverbs 29, 18 in the Passion Translation, my favorite translation, says this. When there is no clear prophetic vision, say when there is no clear prophetic vision, People quickly wander astray, okay? But when you follow the revelation of the word, heaven's bliss fills your soul. How many of you want some bliss? Y'all want some bliss? Does somebody you live with need some bliss in their life? Amen? Maybe you need some and they need some. Well, here you can carry it back to them. Because I'll say this again, when there is no clear prophetic vision for you, everybody do this, for me. When I don't have a vision for me, for me, then I will wander. I will wander. So many of you have probably been wandering, and I'm going to describe what wandering is in a minute because I'm going to touch on some other things. But vision does this. Vision keeps you focused, focused on your future. See, if you don't see your future or you feel like your future is hopeless, guess what you're going to do? Wander. You're going to wander and wonder, right? Right. So purpose is what drives you forward. Purpose is like a direction that you go. There's that target. I'm aiming for it. Because if you aim at nothing, guess what you hit? If you ain't keeping your car in the center of the road, guess where you going? In a ditch, baby. I ain't going to talk about nobody's driving skills up in here, but uh, y'all know what I'm saying. There are some of y'all that might got a ticket this week, or maybe the Lord helped you and gave you grace. I don't know. But... But anyway, because some of y'all drive furiously towards y'all's mark, right? Right. I do. If y'all see me coming, y'all get out of my way. I'm not going to apologize. I do drive furiously and fiercely like Jehu. That is my my spirit animal. I'll say it that way, okay? I relate, Jehu. I relate. I know you in heaven driving around real fast. But anyway, vision keeps you focused on your purpose. Purpose is what God created you for. It's what he created you for. When you don't believe you are here for a reason, you will make one foolish mistake after another. You will hang with the wrong crowd that's going to lead you this way instead of that way. You will make decisions based on your feels and not on what God is speaking to you and whispering to you in your soul. You'll wander aimlessly, that means without direction, through your life with dread depression, anger, frustration. And you know what? When you're not walking in your purpose, you'll feel absolutely unfulfilled. I don't care what you do trying to feel that emptiness. You'll search for it in the needle. You'll search for it in a stranger's bed. You'll search for it at the end of a bottle. But guess what? You will not find it. You will only find yourself more empty, more unfulfilled. Purpose is what gives you the reason to get up every single morning. How many of you need that today? Amen. You need a reason, right? Amen. Amen. It is what keeps you going when you feel like quitting. Because let me tell you a little secret here. Every single one of you, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. Every one of you may have even felt this week like just quitting, like quitting on your marriage, quitting your job. Quitting on a relationship. Checking out of life. Come on, hear me now. Those of you watching via Facebook, you're watching on purpose. God has directed your steps. And when you understand God directs your steps, guess what, baby? You can let go. You can let go of every single thing that is in your past. Because Satan is really good at doing this. Let me tell you what he's good at. He's good at taunting you. He's good at mocking you. He's good at banging you, hitting you over the head with that big question, why? 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 And over and over in your mind, it replays over and over. Because why? He wants to obscure, block your vision. He wants to stop what God has for you. He wants to stop your purpose. See, this is the thing. You may not know that you have a purpose, But guess who does? Of course God. Guess who else? Satan knows. He knows. He he may not know what it is, but he recognizes it. You know why? You're marked. Turn around and tell your neighbor, say, you marked. You marked. And guess what? I don't care how many baths you take, it ain't going to wash off, right? I don't care how far you run to the ends of the earth. Guess who's standing there? God. Guess who's standing there? The purpose. The purpose. 
Amen? Because you're there. So if he can convince you that you have no reason to live, then suicide comes. Thoughts of suicide come because you think, oh, the world's going to be better off without me. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's an assignment. There is a reason. There is something that you must do. And I'm going to show you that. He wants to convince you that you're insignificant, unredeemable, unusable, disqualified, unqualified. He will trip you up and then he's going to stand over you and gloat. He's going to stand there mocking you. And when you try to get back up on your feet, he will smack you back down. And I'll tell you something. When you do make it back up on your feet, he will get in your face and in your head. And he will remind you over and over and over again of the fall. He will tell you every single reason. And I don't know why I'm saying this right here, but I do want to say this. And this is not part of my notes, so y'all better listen, because this means the Lord is whispering something for somebody to hear. Even if you're on the other side of that screen. You may have isolated yourself because of church hurt. You may have made that where the enemy said, see, you can't trust nobody. See, you, you can't. You can't. Don't go back there. They all a bunch of lying hypocrites, right? Right? Here's the truth. We are all sinners. Oh, yeah, baby, I'm talking to you with your cute little white outfit on, and you think you're all pristine and holy because nobody knows the thoughts that you think. Nobody knows what you're doing in secret. So what does that make you? Are you a hypocrite because you come to church? No, we all need God. I am a worthless sinner. I'm like David. I am nothing but a worm. I'm a worm. I am worthless without him. But this is the beauty. There's so much value in you. There's so much worth in you. I just really want you to hear me. There is so much worth in you. I don't care if your mama didn't see it. I don't care if your grandmama didn't see it. Or your daddy abandoned you. The truth is there's so much worth in you that Christ... God's only son, John 3, 16, was sent for you. He was sent for you. And if you were the only one, Clifford, if you were the only one, the only one, Bella, do you know he still would have been sent for you? And willingly he came. Do y'all understand? He willingly came. He saw way ahead of time, and he willingly chose to come for a broken, messed up, jacked up from the flow up church. Yeah, he did. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for just honesty and a willing heart. I made y'all a vow when I took senior pastor of this church. I said, I will never be fake and phony to you. I will be transparent to you. Do you know why? Now hear me on this. Because I can't minister to you. I cannot minister to you if I walk around acting like I ain't never gone through what you've gone through. I can quote scriptures all day long, but baby, how's that going to help anybody when you go, she don't get it? I ain't going to talk to her. I ain't going to talk to him. He don't know what it's like to struggle with depression. He don't know what it's like to struggle with porn. He don't know what it's like to struggle with addiction. She don't know what it's like to think things about depression or giving up or their marriage is falling apart. How can I help you? Now, let me twist it around. How can you help anybody if you don't get real about it, right? Because secrets will kill you. Because secrets will make you sick. I don't even know why I chased that rabbit, but I'm back on my trail now, okay? Somebody needed to hear it. So I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this about the fall, about the mess up, about the trip up. Okay? Here. I want to tell you that even when you were 17 and you did that stupid, stupid thing that you pray to God and it ain't on your record because you was a juvenile or you didn't get caught at 20, or you snuck in a club, or whatever it was, or you got that abortion, or you, you abused that person, or you molested, or you were molested. Listen to me. Did you know God is so awesome and amazing that even at that, even whatever you did at 17, you can't take it back, you can't go back, you can't reverse it, but guess what else you can't reverse? You cannot reverse what God planned for you to do while you were still in your mama's belly. 
while you were still in your mama's belly. Before I formed you, this is Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb. Close your eyes for just a second. Y'all don't go to sleep. I'll throw something at you. <laughs> this ain't nap time. Ain't no power napping going on. Close your eyes for just a second. I want you to see whatever it is you've been struggling with. I want you to see whatever it is that you fail, that you regret. You regret it so, so desperately. You wish you could take it back, have a redo, have a do-over, right? I want you to see that, but then I want you to see something else. I want you to see this, that as God was knitting you together in your mama's belly, she was just a vehicle for you to be in. Many of you have cursed the vehicle, not understanding the one that knit you together. Many of you have cursed where you came from or what you came through, what you didn't have or what happened to you, not understanding. Let me finish reading this. Before I formed you, before he formed you, before he knit you together, before you were even a thought in your mama's eyes or your head or whatever, before any of that, I love this. He said, I knew you and approved. Woo! Somebody hear me today. You may be struggling that you feel like you never are good enough. Never. No matter what you do, you can't get that approval from your mama, from your wife, from your husband. Right? I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. You can open your eyes, turn around and tell your neighbor. Say, you're chosen, don't act frozen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Before you were born, I consecrated you. Do y'all know what that means? Y'all, you know, we have baby dedications. They come up and we go, okay, you make a vow before God. Guess what God did? He made a vow to you. I consecrated you as holy because you are my vessel. You are my chosen. You are my instrument. And it don't matter if you're 50, 60, or 10. He still says, I consecrated. I chose you. I chose you knowing you're going to fall. Moses, he chose you. He chose you knowing you might trip up. Bruce, he chose you. He chose you. He handpicked you. He designed you. He created you. He prepared you for such a time as right now. Y'all quit worrying about COVID so much that you don't understand the times. Now more than ever. Look, baby, there's always been plagues. Don't get, don't get fooled. There's always been sickness. There's always been disease. I have told Seth this over and over because he'll say, you know, people stupid, people crazy. You know, America going to hell. I'll say it like him, America going to hell. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Do you understand? You could have been born in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, you could have. You could have been born on another continent 20 years ago. But for such a time as this, for such a place as this, right here. Why? Because you've been consecrated. You've been chosen. You are his for right now, for right now. It doesn't mean that it was God's plan for you to slip up. It means he is standing there to help you get back up. Amen. I preached that next week, right? Last week. It's his part. It's his part. His part of his purpose for you to use the slip up, the mess up, as part of your testimony. Why? So you can reach a hand down and help somebody else up that tripped over the same thing. Turn around and tell somebody it's time to get back up now. And guess what? Every single person in here, you see yourself as sitting back there and maybe you think, oh, I'm insignificant. I don't have a ministry. I can't influence anybody. Yes, you do. There's people you cross paths with every day, your best friend, your family, your, your cousin, your friend, your coworker. There's people every single day that God has placed in your life. Why? On purpose. Nothing's by chance. I said not one little thing is a mess up. Not even who you marry, baby. Sorry. You can blame it on God all you want, but it's the truth. Every single thing that was, looks like, oh, my God, what a waste. No, baby. 
It's just preparing you as his chosen instrument to be used. Amen? Amen. Every single thing, nothing wasted, nothing wasted. And guess what that is? Ministry. Guess what you are? A minister. A minister. Yeah, you. You got something to say. Purpose is determined. So nobody, nobody can leave you and cause the purpose of God to go with them. Nobody can leave you and cause the purpose of God to be interrupted. Your daddy walking off from you, you know, the rape or whatever, the abuse, losing your job, failing your college course, whatever it is, dropping out of class, being in the gang, whatever it is, God is a redeemer. It did not detour you from the purpose of God because guess what? When he was knitting you together, he goes, ah, oh, she's going to do this. Ah, oh, he's going to do that, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to be standing there. And I'm going to pull them back up out of that miry pit. I will. And I will redeem them. I will redeem them. The purpose of God is sometimes obscured in pain, heartbreak, and tears. Right? Sounds kind of like ashes, don't it? Right? There are events in our lives that scar us forever, that scar you. Maybe you're sitting here and there's something traumatic that happened to you that scarred you. And you may say, there's no way God can redeem these worthless ashes and bring any good from them. Any be- How can beauty come from this? Yes? Seth preached the night before he was ran over. That was appropriate in an ambulance, and I didn't plan that, but there it was. Seth preached the night before. I know. Thank you, Lord. That was cool visual right there. Seth preached the night before he was actually ran over. Hear me. I don't know if many of you know this, but there is nothing. This is what he said, and I'm quoting him. There is nothing the enemy can do. Nothing. I said nothing. Nothing the enemy can do. That will stop the purpose and destiny of God in your life. I want to say that again. I'm quoting my son the night before he was ran over. There is nothing. Not a van hitting you going 55 and not breaking until she hits you. I said there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing. He didn't even know he was speaking destiny. He didn't even know he was speaking prophetically. Woo! Into his future. Let me speak prophetically into yours. There is nothing. There is nothing the enemy has done or can do to you that will stop the purpose and destiny of God knit inside of you. Y'all go ahead and put your hands together on that. Those of you that are listening to this, I want you to know something, and I told you I'm going to be transparent. I could not have imagined how something so absolutely unfair could happen to somebody that was doing the right thing. He was a youth pastor. He wasn't out clubbing, right? He was a youth pastor. He was training for triathlon when he was hit. And, you know, here's the thing. I remember weeping, crying, begging, pleading with God, but then there were times I would rush in and I would fall on my face and scream to the top of my lungs, why? Why, God? And beat the floor and beat it and beat it and scream in my car, beat the steering wheel and say, how could you do this? And you're so great? Yeah, baby, I said it. Guess what? I'm surprised, but a lightning bolt didn't hit me. And at that time, I was almost daring God. Have y'all ever been in that low? That low of a place where you're just like, this ain't fair. It ain't right, dadgummit. You know, but you said something else. But you're in that low place, right? And you say, it's not right. God, what are you doing? How can any good come of this? How can beauty come from these ashes? Right? So horrific so unfair and look at purpose purpose is like a phoenix yeah phoenix is in the bible y'all look it up phoenix is in the bible it's something that comes from the ashes and i have watched this happen and purpose always comes from the ashes baby i said purpose always comes from the ashes praise god one of my favorite scriptures in the bible is the one where it's joseph you know and his brothers really you know they they jacked him up so bad because he was like, I'm chosen, hey, 
I had a vision and had this fabulous fine coat on it. It looked like a Versace, I don't know. But here I was, and I was standing up there all cool, and y'all was bowing down before me, and I was like, yeah, get on up now. And they got angry because they got jealous of him. Why? Not because they were not chosen as well, but because they didn't like the idea of him being chosen. Oh, now. Oh, now. And that's the truth. Maybe there's some of you that have held on to something because you go, you're constantly comparing your chosenness and your purpose to this person's chosenness and their purpose, right? Well, that would trip you up too. But Genesis 50 and 20 says this, because Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery. I want to show you this. I don't really believe that that was the purpose of God, because the purpose of God is this. You know, there's another scripture that says, and I plan to do you no harm. I plan good things for you, right? That's God. But the enemy, on the other hand, is like a roaring lion sinking whom he may devour, whom he may sell into slavery, whom he may get addicted to drugs, whom he may destroy. But this is how God does. He sees because he stands at the beginning and he stands at the end. And he sees the in-between, and he sees the betrayal, and he sees the lies, and he sees the affair, and he sees the pit. And he sees where you were thrown unjustly. And he says, I didn't plan that, but watch how I'm going to work it. Only God can do that. Only God can take someone getting hit on a bicycle with a terrible brain injury that was a speaker, a preacher, a youth pastor, and take the speech away. And you go, how can any good come from this? How can purpose come from this? Genesis 50, 20, Joseph said this as they came back in. Now here it is, you know, I'm gonna get my revenge. They need me now, this is all my dream. Now I can say, ha ha, I told you. Guess what, I ain't giving you no grain, go starve. Remember what you did to me? You sold me out. But listen what he said. Genesis 50, 20, you intended harm for me. Another version says you were determined to destroy me. But God, everybody shout it. Shout it again. Think about the circumstance and look at your neighbor and say, but God. See, that but God factor is this, that but God factor. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position. You thought you destroyed me. You thought you crushed me. But he brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Bam. There's your purpose right there. That's your purpose. See, it ain't just about you. It's bigger than just you. It's about the people that God places on your path, the people that are connected to you. They need you. Why? Because you're a minister. You have an assignment. You can touch them. I can't. If you get them here on a Sunday, I can. But you see people all during the week, and you're just like caught up in your own fields, and you don't understand. You are a minister. You got something to say. Yeah, you're that important. Destiny hangs in the balances. A soul is either heaven or hell, and you have something to say. Joseph. You have something to say. That is the awesomeness of the God we serve. He can take ashes of all you lost and still use them for his purpose. There is no stopping what God has started until it is completed. Oh, y'all just a minute. I'm going to have a little praise break right here. Woo, Jesus. Romans 8. 28 through 30. And we know. Come on, say, I know. I know. know. Look at your neighbor. I I know. I know. With great confidence that God, I'm going to show that video right after this, guys. That God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things. Everybody shout, Oh! Oh! Shout again, say, Oh! Oh! All things to work together. Say it. Say together. Together. 
as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according, according to his plan and his purpose, not Satan, not your ex-wife, not the boo that left you and broke up with you. No, 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 for his, his, his plan and purpose for those whom he foreknew before you were in your mama's belly and loved and chose everybody said I'm chosen. I'm chosen beforehand that's before you messed up he still chose you right he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son Amen. and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. No matter what you tripped over, he still called you, he still chose you. Those whom he called, he justified. That means he made you put in right standing with God. Declared free of the guilt of sin. And those whom he justified. He also glorified. He didn't just say, okay, you're free of sin. I declare you guilt-free. He also glorified you. He raised you up. I love this. Raising them to a heavenly dignity. Think about that. God doesn't just love you and chooses you. He respects you. Why? Because your purpose is in him. Why? Because you are the image of his son, Christ. Amen, amen. Some of your greatest mistakes will be the greatest seed for your greatest miracles. It is called purpose, baby, and it shall prevail. It always prevails. When I say purpose is determined, I want you to know it is also determined by us. Purpose is determined before it is discovered. And I want to show this video right now. This is a video. It's a, y'all know Seth has got a TikTok channel, Instagram. I'm not promoting that. I want to show you how God can take the silly, foolish things of the wise. You know, they, they go, ain't no way ministry going to come out of this. And he, Jesus is like, hey, you get out of my way. Let me show you something, baby. Get on back. Okay? Just signal at me. No idea. I can guess what I explained to you. <laughs> it's the California roll with a crack cake on top. This. <laughs> Got you. This. <laughs> what, what are we looking at here? What, are we, what, are we what is that? Is it wings? That's really cool. Wow. <laughs> hey. Give me. Give me. Wow. <laughs> million point five or something right yeah would you have ever thunk it would you say oh that's ministry praise Jesus hallelujah feel the presence of God right there you would not would you I didn't I sure didn't now I'm going to tell you how God will smuggle in the gospel through your goofy silly things that you discount don't tell your children and don't ever make them feel when they say God said something to them don't make them feel insignificant Okay, let me show you something. This is how God uses something terrible. I would have never thought this would have been ministry out of getting hit by a bicycle and not being able to speak. He's ordering food, people. Flex him while he's doing it so he can encourage and inspire these people that can't speak because a lot of them just stay home and give up. They don't even try. And they're like, dang, if Seth can do it, I can do it. Let me show you something. Here's just one comment. Seth and those who have been involved in his journey are amazing. I was a nurse before my seizures began. Please remind Seth for me that although he wasn't able to be a nurse, he was in nursing school, remember, when he got hit. He is bringing so much comfort, encouragement, and love to others, the same as a nurse would do. Do the next one real quick. I'm showing y'all something. Hold on. Just when I thought life was over. Come on. Come on. And all my hope was lost. I stumbled upon a TikTok of yours. And it gave me hope and life knowing there are others who struggle and survive. And I just want to say thank you for saving my life. Thank you for saving my life. You inspired me to keep going no matter what the struggles are. Thank you, Seth. One more. 
This is an amazing story. Man, I'm currently having life problems as well. I've hit rock bottom due to drug addictions. And now things are coming to me slowly. This just gave me huge inspiration. And you are doing great things, Seth. I love your post. You are such a great and wonderful person. God has your back. He always does. Even though I'm not a believer. Even though I'm not a believer. This post has opened my eyes. Thank you for the, I don't know what that means, and tism. Oh, appreciate it, millennials. And thank you so much for the going. Would love to see more of you in the future. Got this, you beautiful, beautiful man. There is somebody that needs you, and you think that you can't preach? Your life is preaching. Hear me today. That's just a handful. I mean, there's millions and millions of comments. I can't even go there. There has been witches, people, that have atheists, people that, that got jaded and said, I don't believe in God because this terrible injury happened to me or to my child. My child died. There's purpose in you. There's somebody that needs you so desperately, and that's why we're doing this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Because, baby, it ain't all about you. Mm -mm. You ain't all that in a bag of chips. Uh-uh, you think you are. Now, I love you. You're cute. Your mama might think you're cute, too. But, baby, there's a high call on you. You are chosen. You are marked. You are marked. And all you have to do, all you have to do, purpose is determined before it's discovered, is say, God, use me. Use me. Everybody that crosses my path today, let me say just one thing to them, not be so caught up in my own feels or, or my own things I'm dealing with and struggling with that I forget I'm a minister. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I'm Jesus Christ in skin on this earth. And that's the only Jesus they may ever see. Do you hear me? Oh, by the way, just a side note, please quit posting stupid crap on Facebook. Use it as a tool. Do not post nothing political. We don't care. If you vote this or that, I don't care. I love you because you are a child of God. You are my sister. You are my brother, regardless of how much money you make and don't make. Regardless of what neighborhood you live in or you don't live in. Regardless of what job position you hold. Or car you drive. Or label you got on. You are my sister. You are my brother. God has placed you because it is appointed that he placed you there. So wake up. Turn around and tell your neighbor, wake up. All you have to do is wake up to the reality that God is with you and has been with you all along. Romans 8, 28, all things, all things, all things work together. So the mistakes you made, the hell you walked through, the messes you made, when you give it to God, you lay it at the cross. And yeah, even Christians mess up, so get over yourself. Quit acting like you don't. All the messes you made, when you give it to God, your history becomes his story. I say all the time when I'm sharing Seth's story, and Seth will immediately, when they're like, oh, man, you are awesome. You the GOAT. I didn't even know what that meant. Greatest of all time. Yay. And um, they say things like that, and Seth's quick to go, no, no, no. All God. All God. It's his story. It's his. It ain't yours. You're a character in the book of his story. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sound system, for amen and me. Then your history, your shame, your pain brings him glory. He saw your slip up. He still chose you. The enemy of your purpose wants to convince you that you derailed, derailed the plans of God by your foolishness. And I'm speaking this right now because I believe that there is someone that's watching this or even in this room. Maybe the call of God was on your life and you feel like you've done something, some things so stupid that you've messed it up. You've really botched things, right? And people are quick to tell you that and judge you. But I want you to know you've not gone too far away. There's always a way back. There's always a way back. God's grace, he can use you. God's grace is pulling at you. God's grace is my voice reminding you. He ain't let go of you yet, sir or ma'am. I want you to know there's always a way back. Why? Because God is our redeemer. I love the name redemption because one of the meanings is to buy back something sold. But one of the other meanings is to go back to the beginning. Does anybody need a do-over? 
Do you need a do-over? Grace covers you. Joel 2.25, and I am closing with this. Everybody stand. Those of you who are watching today, I want you to listen to the words of the scripture. Joel 2.25 in the New King James Version says this. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. God is a God that restores. He's not a God that throws you away. Many of you, close your eyes, many of you have thought that you're too far gone. Many of you have thought, I've blown it so bad. There is literally no way back. I have burned every bridge that God had built for me. Sir, ma'am, if you're on the other side of that screen right now, God is talking to you right now. That's the spirit of God. That's grace. That's redeeming grace. He's bought you back with a price you could not pay. You didn't have enough money. You didn't have enough I'm sorry's inside of you. God still loved you enough that he redeemed you before you ever messed up. He said, I'm not just going to pay a drop of blood. You can cut my wrist a little bit or prick my finger. He said, I will give you everything because you're worth it. He's given everything for you because you're worth it. You're worth it. He is reaching for you today to redeem you. He's reaching for you today to bring you close to him. Don't stand afar off like a child that's done something wrong and you're embarrassed. Come to the Father today. Fall upon his lap. Let him just hug you and hold you because you know what he's saying? Welcome home, baby. Welcome home, baby. It's going to be all right. You just lay it all right here. We're going to get a do-over. We're going to start all over. Right now, if you are lost and you're away from God, I want to invite you to say this prayer with me and those that are here in the sanctuary with me. Just keep your eyes closed and repeat after me. Father, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my shortcomings. Lord, I give you every single flaw, every fault, every mistake, every scar. And Lord, right now, I just want you to redeem me. Forgive me and cover me with your blood. And Lord, I will use everything that I've done that is full of shame. All of the mess-ups and the trip-ups. All of the mistakes I've made. Yeah, even those done in secret and those done in public. The things that I embarrassed you and myself with. God, I surrender it to you. I want you just to lift your hands right now and say, I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender all. If you prayed that prayer today, I want you to reach out to us so that we can connect you to a family that loves you, that wants to encourage you. The vision of Redemption Power Church is to elevate your eyes to know that you were better than that. To encourage you, you've got brothers and sisters here that will lift you up when you're going through something. To empower you, to equip you to lead. That's the God we serve, and that's the body we are. Find a church and connect to them. And send us your prayer request by going to that app. I think there's even a link at the top of this page where you can go to the app, put the prayer request in. Next Sunday, we are going to start praying and fasting corporately as a church. We are not the only church doing this. This is, nas this is not just national. It's global, people. When the church begins to pray... Hey, hey, hey. When the church begins to pray and stop saying, well, they're doing that, I ain't going to do it. They're doing that, I ain't going to do it. When the church begins to pray, one can put a thousand to flight. 
Two can put two, 10,000? Your babies are coming home. I said your babies are coming home. I'll see you next Sunday for part two of the series. If you are in this place and you want prayer, please come forward. We are a church that prays. We believe in the power of prayer. We know a God that works miracles. So I want to invite you to the front right now if you are here, and we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today at Redemption Power Church in Monroe, Louisiana. If you have prayed the prayer of salvation today, we would love for you to reach out to us. We want to rejoice with you. You know, the Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one soul is saved. So we are so thrilled today. If you've made that decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, we want to hear from you and we want to give you the opportunity to grow and mature in Christ and in your walk with Christ. So reach out to us. Let us know that you prayed that prayer of salvation so that we can get you connected and get you involved so that you can grow and mature in your full purpose. We also want to thank all of you who have given and been faithful in your giving of his tithe and your offering, even during this period where some of you are still at home watching due to COVID. I just want to tell you, we love you so much. We value your support and it is because of your giving and your faithfulness that you have given us the opportunity to serve our community and serve the homeless community as well. We are his hands and feet and through your contribution, we can continue to be effective. Thank you so much. See you next Sunday.